everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Happy hump day to you. Listen, we have a very, very special episode of the conversation tonight. Um, the conversation with Yolanda Trotman series continues tonight with our personal conversation series where I have had the opportunity to speak some, to speak to some pretty incredible guests as we talk about their story, as we talk about um, who they are, what they're doing now, and of course, what is next for them. So we are going to be talking to tonight a very special guest, and we're going to be talking about her story and where, um, where she's come from, what she's doing now, and of course, what is going on with her in the very, very near future. So if you have not already done so, definitely need you to slide over to the conversation with Yolanda Trotman page, um, which is the Combo Pod Show, all things social media. You can join us there. Um, there you can like, subscribe, and follow at all things on social media at the Combo Pod Show. And of course, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to us over at YouTube at the conversation with Yolanda Trotman. If you haven't already done so, definitely make sure that you like and follow the Combo Pod Show page as well. So tonight we're going to be talking to someone and talking with someone who is a very, very dear friend of mine. We've known each other for years. I can't wait to tell that story. We're going to be talking about her meteoric rise from, from um, being an attorney to being a television host and author and now um, in her landmark role as the first African-American cast member of Real Housewives of New York. I see that she is here, so let me bring her in. There she is. Hey, sis, how are you? Hi, Attorney Trotman. I'm well, my dear. How are you? I am fantastic and so happy to see you. How have you been, boo? Good. Bless, sis. How are you doing during this pandemic? So, listen, I am holding on as best I can, as I'm sure is true for so many people, um, just trying to hold on. It's just been a real whirlwind for all of us as we're trying to navigate this space, you know? I'm um, trying to keep our sanity. I am literally not here in my house. <laughs> I am on vacation because I was like, I got to get away. I got to get away and go do something because they are getting ready to reopen courts here in North Carolina to jury trials. Wow. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but we are, you know, we, it is what it is. And I am on the trial calendar for the next two weeks. So I said, well, let me go ahead at least. And um, get my life together. <laughs> Where are you vacationing, sis? I am in beautiful Turks and Caicos, Providenciales. Oh. It is fantastic and the best time to go because Provo can be a little on the pricey side. But the fact that, you know, nobody's here <laughs> pretty much. I love that. And, um, it has actually been great. I'm in a condo here. Airbnb is fantastic. So it's been a, been a little windy, but listen, the beaches here are fantastic. Have you been before? Low key, little known tea. I went briefly on my first honeymoon. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we're not coming back here anytime soon. <laughs> no, I do want to come back. I feel like I didn't really get to see the island girl. So, there was so much going on. Um, and you know, God has been good since then. So, I need to now revisit Turks and Caicos with the new aura. We'll say, yes, ma'am. We're gonna need you to do that expeditiously. So okay, let's get into it. Let's get into it because I know um we I know that you're short on time, so we're going to cover as much as we possibly can. Hopefully, have you back. For those of you joining us, I'm Yolanda Trotman, the host of the conversation with Yolanda Trotman. So if you haven't already done so, slide on over to the Combo Pod Show. Follow us there, obviously here at Attorney Trotman. And if you haven't already done so, check out the website, which is thecombopodshow.com. So this series is particularly special to me because um, I'm I've called it personal conversations and having deeper conversations oh my god this is miss carrie james this is miss carrie james my bestie oh my god i was never a dog person yolanda but i got carrie about four years ago and she's mm -hmm. my bestie she's just been with me the whole time are you serious? What's her breed? She's beautiful. 
Isn't she beautiful? Um, I feel like we don't we look alike. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma no, she's, ma she's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Okay, that's. I think fancy. we look just alike. No, no, you in denial. <laughs> no, ma'am. Hey, what you talking about, Attorney Trout? Man, we twins. Y'all cute. Don't get me wrong, you both. I'm gonna put her down. She just wanted to say hey. But you've not evolved into that one yet, where you know <laughs> the dog looks just like you. That's we're not there yet. So we just take a lot of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, how old is she now? She's four, I've, and I've had her since she was twelve weeks. Oh, so you had her as a baby, baby. Yeah, that's oh, my goodness. Do you think she'll ever have a new friend or a little friend to play with? Yeah, you know what? Okay, so I am, she's a latchkey puppy. Um, <laughs> she yeah. is, she's got a hard working single black mama. And mm -hmm. I do sometimes think I should give her a little playmate. But right. I travel so much during non-COVID times, you know. Right. So that's the only thing. But, um, but I love her. So anyway. Well, you know, I'm a cat mama. And never thought that I would be a cat. Well, I always love pets, but you how, know, many, I, I had, how many cats do you have? I'm not a crazy cat lady. You only become a crazy cat lady when you have three. You have two. So two are okay. Yeah, they're siblings. I was only getting one. His sister was like, you my mama too. So I said, hmm. okay, you can come home with me as well. So yes, so I have two. So I yes, I mean, and I get it as far as the travel and the schedule and all of that. I always wanted a dog, but travel just didn't allow for it. But she is absolutely beautiful. So, all right, so let's get into it, sis. Okay, yes. so we first have to tell the story of how we met. You want to tell it or you want me to tell it? I want you to tell it and then I'll chime in. Okay, so my recollection, I, I wish I could remember the year. I want to kind of tell like Sophia Petrilla, like picture it the year. Don't I remember the year. That the year 2007 continue that okay picture it 2007 the mecklenburg county courthouse mm -hmm. um i am in courtroom i believe 4150 or 4170 in the new 41 courthouse. or 70 yeah that's where i was all the time mm -hmm. yes and in walks a sister who I was like just happy to every time I see another sister walk in the court, I'm like, yes, honey, I'm gonna roll up, we're gonna give you some what this is before black girl magic was a thing, but we're gonna sprinkle some of that up there. And I remember we met and I remember thinking, okay, she's a badass. Like I just knew immediately that you had badass tendencies. Um, and it's so interesting being in the criminal defense realm as opposed to other parts of law is so different in, in how you navigate it because you have to be you have to use your femininity, if you will, to your advantage. And we'll get to that when we talk about pretty powerful. But it's, it was interesting navigating that space. So I, I will watch you do your thing um, and just how you advocated for clients. I could remember how how far out of law school you were. I know you hadn't just gotten out of law school, but you've been out for a while. I've been out for a couple years because before. Um, so when I met you, Yolanda, I was actually obviously in a courtroom, which I was so happy to be there because I was working mm -hmm. as a Defender. Before that, I was at a mid firm, mid sized firm in, in Charlotte. Um, James McElroy and um, mm -hmm. Dan yeah. Mc that's it. Deal. Yeah, of course, Bill Deal. How can I forget? And I went to lunch with Tayati Baker at the time, Judge Hands now. And mm -hmm. like, you know what? Firm life is cool, but if you really want to try some cases and you want to learn how to be an advocate quickly, you need to go ahead and get in this courtroom and get some real trial experience. So I went to the PD office and that really got exposed to really what I consider a sorority of black female litigators. Yourself, Kim Best, I, um, my sisters at the PD office, um, it was Rhonda, Rhonda, um, you know who I'm talking about. Brooks. Yep, Rhonda Brooks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and y'all just really took me under your wings and, and taught me in many ways how to be a black woman uh, practicing law in that space. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I remember when you said where you came from. I, if I remember correctly, weren't you the, their first black attorney ever? I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was the first yeah. black woman. I think they had a black guy like 20 years ago and something happened to him, but I was their first black in forever. And their only black lawyer at that time. 
I, yeah, and I remember saying, mm, well, you know, there's a reason why they hadn't had any black folks in a long time. I was like, just like, sis, just be careful. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's different. But anyway, so you, so you got your chops sharpened, if you will, at the public defender's office. I think you were there for two or three years or yep. was it longer? F. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so what prompted you to leave? Because I don't remember. I just I, rem I remember when you said that you were leaving, but I just I don't remember the circumstances. So I actually left for personal reasons. I love, you know, I loved it. I love. I just I'm trying. What did I? I love the energy. Um, you know, like, and I just remember it was nothing like being in front of those judges, and they were so diverse. Actually, at the time, I remember. Um, what was the sister, um, Ricky, Judge Ricky? McCoy Mitchell. McCoy yep. Mitchell, Judge Theo. Nixon. Mr. Nixon, who passed, mm -hmm. right? Didn't Judge mm -hmm. Nixon pass? Um, he did. Yeah, it was just so many. Uh, I just, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, yeah. just um, the exhilaration I felt being in front of them, starting with like bond hearings and then probation hearings and DV court. Um, mm -hmm. I really cut my teeth and really feel like for me, at least Yolanda, that's where I really felt like I was a, a real lawyer, you know, really right. standing beside a client with a file and needing to know just basics, basic shit. Um, how many days they'd already served in custody? Um, mm -hmm. How many they were looking at maximum, what their prior criminal history, if they had one, looked like. Did they qualify for a diversion program? We, we, just all of that stuff. It's so it, it can seem basic, but it, unless someone like yourself or Rhonda or Ty or someone's teaching you, or even people taught me from the bench, you know, unless right. someone's kind of explaining this stuff to you, uh, how to do an add-on hearing. Um, it's just stuff I'll never, I'll never forget, you know, um, and. I'm just so grateful that I had the experience, but I left for personal reasons. But I moved up to to Raleigh, Durham, and mm -hmm. then I started practicing for a gentleman named Butch Williams in Durham, who was um, mm -hmm. also took me under his and just continued my legal education. And what Butch taught me, Yolanda, was about being a community lawyer. It's, it, it's you know you need to be effective in the courtroom, but there's just a community element to what we do as black attorneys in particular. Right. And, and Butch was a brilliant litigator, but he was like a grandpa to the community, the uncle. He was Uncle Butch. And right. I really, that was a requirement uh, of what we do as black attorneys, is particularly in the criminal defense space. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, those were just some of the best years of my life, truly. And so what was the biggest lesson that you found as a trial lawyer? Not before we got into getting the television and all that, but yeah. what's the biggest lesson that you learned as far as representing people? Or maybe one of the biggest, let me ask it differently, one of the biggest misconceptions, especially doing defense work, because there's a lot of misconceptions that people have um, for people who are hardcore defense attorneys, in, in particular female defense attorneys. Mm -hmm. What do you think one of the biggest misconceptions are? Well, I think the biggest misconception is the basic one, right? That we uh, have no moral compass of our own, uh, that we're just out here trying to, quote, get people off. Uh, and it's, it's it comes from a place of ignorance, right, Yolanda? The reality is everybody in a court of law has a job to do. And our job as defense counsel is to really ensure that our prosecutors, the adversarial system, make sure that they are held accountable their responsibility of meeting their burden of proof and when they don't do that and or they jeopardize constitutional rights in the process that's where we show up and what we're right. there to do is ensure that our client every citizen is entitled to a defense that's a constitutional amendment we don't cherry pick who gets defense in this country and thank god for that right right it says we all get one and our job is to that that defense is in place, that it is zealous, and that it protects constitutional rights. Um, and I relish it. This day is something I'm proud to do. So I think that's the biggest misconception is that we are there to uh, undo justice or free criminals. Uh, that That's really just not what we do in the space. We, we ensure that the system works in all cylinders. 
Um, and I couldn't have said it better because it's so important that people recognize that, especially in this day and age when there's such a tremendous push for social justice issue, just understanding how the system works and mm -hmm. that the, you know, whether you agree or disagree, it still puts you in that situation that everybody knows you only go to the courthouse because you have to. Nobody goes to the courthouse because they want to. You go because no. you have to. And, and nobody wants a lot. Yolanda, you know, I always tell people this joke, but it's not funny, right? It's funny till it's not. Nobody likes a lawyer till you need one. Okay. Tell that. <laughs> tell that. Right. There. right. That is the truth. So, okay. So for those of you joining us, I'm here with Ebony Williams here on the conversation with Yolanda Trotman. If you haven't already done so, definitely make sure that you follow us on all things social media at the Combo Pod Show. Uh, we can see your comments. So if you have questions, drop them in the comments. For those of you who are kind of sort of catching us on Facebook, if you have questions, drop them in the comments as well as we proceed. So listen, okay. So you leave Raleigh. And then is that when you transition into television or was there a, a, a lull into that? Yeah, that's when I went out to L.A., Yolanda, and I'm glad you asked me because I often get asked, what was the plan? I, I swear to before Jesus, wait, baby, I had no plan. I wow. went to L.A. because I knew I loved one. Matter of fact, going back to the uh, probably courtroom, uh, what, what was it, uh, 1470 or 1570, wherever we were in Mecklenburg, Ken Snow, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. to ask me. And he was one of the best dressed lawyers in Charlotte. At least he was at the time. He still does all right. He still does all right. <laughs> but don't yes. tell him I said that. <laughs> I, I, don't tell him I said it, child. So okay. <laughs> so Ken, so every time I would come into court, would ask me, "What's next?" He was like, uh, "Attorney Williams, you know, I know you're a young attorney, but you're you know, very talented. You're good at what you do. What's next?" And I was like, "You know, Ken." I don't know, but I know I want to do something. I know I, I love the law. I was such a nerd, Yolanda, and you, you saw this problem mm -hmm. when you first met me. I was such a nerd. I was so geek about justice and the system and, and our opportunity to represent change in a system that never really worked for our people. But I did feel a little confined uh, in mm -hmm. my as a trial attorney because, as you know, justice can be slow moving particularly right. our people. I mean, just everything from continuances to uh, trial delays, to just you name it. And I was impatient because I was so young and, you know, at I, I fresh, you know, fresh face and bushy tailed. I just wanted to get it all done in a hurry. Right. So I made a decision that if I, if I moved to media, maybe there was a play there because I had a background in pageantry and, you know, whatever, you know, I definitely thought I was walking the runway every time I went to court. And so I was like, maybe there's a play. No, you were. I don't need to sit there and try to look, look, y'all. For y'all watching, everybody would be coming in there and, and just me and be like, oh, snap. Judge oh, <laughs> <laughs> Leo Nixon, man. He, he can't keep it like that. Oh. before slaying was a thing. Don't even try it. Girl, whatever. We're going to sprinkle that magic on that too. Anyway, I digress. No, I'm glad you say that because people think that's just something I do for TV, Yolanda. And I right. tell young, young people, so it was just, I can't believe I'm now saying it, right? Because, you know, goodness, these kids coming out of law school left and right these days. But I tell these young, young attorneys uh, and even law students, show up representing your client the same way you would in any other capacity. So that's not something I do for TV. I would look the same way, and you can attest to it, yo, when I would show yeah. up to represent somebody in a bond hearing. It was the same. It was heels. It was a dress, my makeup's done, not like it is now. I just figured I'd bless you with a fresh face tonight. Um, but you know, it was, you know, because I'm I'm my client's credibility. You right. know, and I and, and the way I show up and the way in which I make effort is a direct correlation as to how serious my client and their uh their narrative will be taken. So it's it's storytelling and all of that. And that's what, so much of what we do as as attorneys and and counselors of the law is we are conveying uh, a narrative that best positions our client. So I took all of that shit very seriously. And I said, where is there an opportunity for me to correlate what I do in trial work to what the media represents as justice? And right. I didn't have the answer, Yolanda, but I knew I was interested in the question. And so really, mm -hmm. for the next 
I moved to LA in 2010. Yeah, mm-hmm. I left the firm and I moved to LA in 2010. And I would say I spent about six or so years trying to answer that question. How do I show up in mm-hmm. a school and I better represent and educate our people about law and justice and, and politics and all the all the things that affect our people and our ability to have justice. And and you know the rest of the story. So basically it went from going to LA with no plan and I landed in talk radio and I was hosting a talk yeah, that radio. I didn't know, for people who didn't know that you started off in talk radio. I did. I started even though I thought I was half cute. Um I I did start in radio because mm-hmm. and I'll tell you this, I'm glad I did start in radio, Yolanda, and not TV. Okay. Because in radio, you don't have the distraction of the camera and the aesthetic. It's all about the content. Mm-hmm. It's all about the facts. It's all about knowing your shit, to put it bluntly. And so I was able to hone my skill set as a broadcaster and mm-hmm. really understand how to give a sound bite, how to deliver content that was really in- impactful. So I started in radio. I spent many years, two or three years, just in radio. Then the television part came, and then it was, and then that part was easy, right? Because now that I know the content, I had that down. The TV part was just icing on the cake. So I did that for many years. Cable news, HLN, CNN, CBS News, infamous tenure at Fox News. And Wait, then, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. We got to go in for a second with, with, with about a minute and 30 seconds. Well, what you drinking on, sis? What you drink? This is just a little Casamigos. A little oh, blonde okay. Casamigos. I'm, I'm rumming it up. I'm about, I'm oh, that's about a, to Oh, of course, you're in Turks and Caicos. Cheers, right. my sis. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Clink, mm-hmm. clink, 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 clink. All right. So tell us, so Fox, so you do you think that was more of a launching path for you, or do you feel like that you were already on your way um, prior to Fox? I mean, I think that I was developing a skill set prior to Fox Yolanda, but I will mm-hmm. make uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to play like Fox was not in many ways. It was the highest visibility, you know, and in some parts of, of media, it's the work and then there's the visibility. So it's right. all balancing, right? Like the, the work and the impact, but if nobody sees it, what's your ability to impact? So right. for me, Fox was a visibility play. It was also an opportunity to an audience that was primarily white, primarily mm-hmm. super far right conservative, primarily very ignorant to the realities and humanity of blackness. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in a, in a perfect world, it wouldn't matter what people of those ilk think about us as black people. But because we right. are trying it's what we know. And this is literally the most simple answer I can give people that want to know how I landed at Fox. When I was trying cases, we have to put 12 in a box that become our jurors. Mm-hmm. White people disproportionately show up for jury duty. That's a fact. Yeah. White, people, right, white people disproportionately represent jurors of black defendants. That's a fact. And therefore, what Certain white people think about us is extremely important. It's extremely relevant to the justice that we see in the courtrooms of America. And I correlate mm-hmm. that during my years of, in practice, Yolanda. And because of that, I really wanted to humanize blackness for that particular sect of white America. And I decided where are they getting their content, where they're getting their understanding of the world, and the answer was Fox News. For better or for worse. So that was literally my um, intent behind going to Fox. I really had very clear intention that I wanted to educate slash just give them exposure to a powerful, educated, unapologetic, conscious black woman so that the mm-hmm. next are serving in a jury pool or otherwise on the receiving end of accountability for black life it would potentially have a better understanding of that true and so do you did you already have media connections before you went out to la and ended up in in um talk radio first before or it just evolved out of there 
It came out of a date, girl. I didn't girl, know tell me. I did. Okay, so I talked about going to Turks and Caicos during my first honeymoon. I say first because I, God willing, I'll have a second one one day. Um, <laughs> so I got married. I got divorced within the first year of being in L.A. And then I was single girl rebuilding. And I went on a date with somebody. It wasn't a love connection. But this is why I tell Yolanda, always go on the date. He was a very lovely man, a very intelligent man. And I told him on the date that I had this intention of getting into media and doing legal and political analysis, maybe getting into news, broadcast, whatever. He actually right. listened. And so the next day he called me for another day. I was like, oh, you know, I don't think I'm really ready. I don't necessarily think it was like, he was like, whatever, fine. He's like, but I know you said you were interested in maybe doing some news or broadcasting. My homeboy from Georgetown has a talk radio show and he's looking for a legal analyst. Are you mm -hmm. interested? And I started that way, Yolanda. I went on this black man's radio show and I, I dissected, I think at the time it was um, Jody Arias was the big mm -hmm. case. So that's how I started my broadcast. I didn't know anything. I'm not a journalism student. I had a communication and black history degree. But I, I was self-taught as a broadcaster. I started using our skill set as legal experts, and I learned how to give analysis and broadcast, and I learned all of that on the job. So I just want to encourage people, don't think, well, because I don't have a degree in broadcast journalism, or I don't have a master's in this, that. Um, don't let that deter you, because if you are committed and you surround yourself with mentors, uh, you'll be surprised at what that you can ascertain in real time. Because that's, I learned how to broadcast, Yolanda, and at this point, mm -hmm. in my I'm so blessed. I've network national news. I've done all that. It's all learned on the job. So it's amazing. Okay. So I, I know we're we're a little tight on time. We got about 20 minutes. So we're gonna move quick. Okay. Yeah, so, so, quick. so pretty powerful is the book. Yes. What gave you the idea? And for people who haven't read it, how would you describe the premise of it in, a, in just a few sentences? Yeah, the premise is simple, Yolanda. It's simply that as as women in particular. And black women, in further particular, I feel that we've always been asked to pick. Either be taken seriously and substantive and smart and intelligent and about our business, or it is feminine and beautiful and soft and desirable. And as a black girl growing up in pageants and commercials and that world, theater, but then also being in academically gifted classes, AP classes, knowing I wanted to go to law school, I felt like I was a walking contradiction. And I felt that was bullshit. I felt that we should be able to op occupy both spaces. So I wrote the book I wish existed when I was 17 or 18. And that's what Pretty Powerful is about. It is really about women's ability to show up with substance and equal parts style and two of them combined, right? the force unreckoned with mm. and they can and they can purchase it i'm assuming through all all outlets yeah all I think it's like a little of nothing on amazon right now um and don't worry i'm working actually on the next book already um a very oh. different one that i really think the culture is going to appreciate and so when did you feel like that you were finally using your voice in a way that was that was meaningful for you? Because I know you talk about what was important as far as Fox is concerned and like exposing them to the, the real truth, whether they accepted it or not, obviously. Right. Not. But, <laughs> but when did you feel like you really had your own voice and you and you knew that your voice had power in a way that you could speak to the culture and speak to the people in a way that was meaningful? When did that moment hit you? Recently. Believe it or not, very just recently. recently. Just recently. And I'll tell you exactly the platform. And I love everything that I'm doing right now. I love Revolt. I love Revolt Black News. I I can't wait for y'all to see Real Housewives of New York because that is some, whew, that's some content. But I have to tell you, Yolanda, when I have finally gotten satisfaction, starting to get, I should say, satisfaction, that my voice has impact and cultural relevance and importance is holding court. My podcast. Really? Your podcast? Get out it's of here. I'm most proud of because it's the ability to communicate 
to our people. And listen, Holding Court has a, a, a diverse audience, and I'm grateful for all the people that listen to it. But I make no apology for a lot of trust. I make this content for Black folks, okay? Mm -hmm. From the Black Effect Network for a reason. I right. make this content because our people, and you know this better than anybody, as a, as a veteran, former judge, and trial attorney, that our people by design, Yolanda, are not supposed to have access, understanding, or empowerment of the way our systems move. It's by design. And mm -hmm. I'm in that I wanted to bust that shit wide open. I got to pay back Sally. Okay? I pay it every month. <laughs> so therefore, since I have, seriously though, acquired this uh, privilege of legal knowledge and understanding, I really wanted to design a platform that allows to convey that to our people so that when they themselves or their family members or their loved ones either have to sadly experience the criminal justice system for themselves or family law talk about you know all kinds of aspects of the law right or they're reading the headlines Yolanda so I'll give you an example we know this week uh Derek Chauvin finally is is starting uh jury selection for his trial around the killing of George Floyd now, we also saw that the, the jury selection was delayed a day. Mm -hmm. And people in the culture, from where I was sitting, were very upset. Um, what's going on? Why is the trial not starting? I'm pissed off. So we're holding court. I'm able to explain to them, yo, listen, there's this third-degree murder charge that we need to figure out if it applies, how it applies. And it's important that we get it right. Because if indeed it should be available to these jurors we need to figure that out because if they convict him of third degree murder and then the 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 supreme court of the state overturns the precedent line case that allows for a third degree murder for an individual uh killing he could end up that could be overturned second uh and, double and, right. and that's it and yeah. that's it and that's a problem that's the ultimate injustice. So you see what I mean, Yolanda? Like the ability to, 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 to slow down the process so our people get that so that they're not, the knee jerk isn't, oh my God, they're delaying the trial. This is a travesty. No, 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 no. They're delaying the trial. And while we don't like that, we'd rather an accurate accounting of justice than a rush to the wrong form of justice that ends up with this man uh, being held not accountable for the killing of our brother George Floyd. So my ability, Yolanda, to deliver that content and empower our people to understand this shit is the greatest um, the greatest joy of my professional career. And you can say shit. And nobody... And oh, nobody exactly. Can before, and that that can, <laughs> you know what's so funny? I can never go back to like a job job again because right. I just have such a... I, I got a potty mouth. I'm proud and from the South. I just need to say it plain. And I love that I've been able to finally find um, a home, right, where I really feel loved on and not always agreed with, because I think agreement can be overrated. This is not about everybody, thinking like I think, but it is about people making space for the dialogue, making space for the consideration and making space um, just for our collective evolution as a people and empowerment and i love that and i think that's important about what we do especially as women um and i don't want to belabor the point but i think this is so important especially um with your respective journey from you know obviously attorney to author to using your platform in different ways it's so important for us as as women especially to educate as much as we can because oftentimes it can be presented in a way that um is is better received um, and in a way that is is sometimes easier easier to digest, if you will, just sure. for a nicer way of saying it. You know what I'm saying? I know and exactly. So, what you mean. Yeah, right. And so, okay, let's get to the to what's going on with Real Housewives of New York. <laughs> Obviously, tell us about when you found out that you were going to be the cast member. Obviously, that is historic. Because anybody who's been watching that series, what are they, 10, 15 years in? 13. And, yeah, 13 girl, years. Shut up. Shut up. 13 years. I don't even, I stopped watching it probably. Years ago. I didn't watch it because it, there was no black people. Like, y'all don't have no black friends. Like, you know, okay. Right. So, anyway, let's talk about it. 
So you get the call, you're in, are you almost like, oh, I don't know about this for real, for real? Or was it like, hell yeah, they gonna get some of this Ebony K. Williams black girl magic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the by the time I got the call, Yolanda, to say, we think you'd be a great addition of the show. Yes, they were gonna get all of this, what I'm bringing. But before that, obviously you know we're trained in risk assessment as lawyers so mm -hmm. i have to be as you know as as great of a visibility as the platform is there is a stigma there is absolutely a stigma to just reality television in general and housewives in particular so mm -hmm. i have to think okay what is going to be it was not dissimilar to me deciding to join fox news is my intention and my effectiveness in my intention, going to be uh, successful enough to circumvent or overcome any negative stigma. Now, I don't know the answer to that, you know, and that's a risk, obviously, I was willing to take. But after shooting the season, we, 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 we finished shooting in February. I think you guys will have a teaser there soon, and then we'll air the season. I can't promise that date, but... Y'all don't have to wait long. It's coming soon. I think that people will find my intention was worth it. I truly believe that. I think people will really find it was worth it. And think that, you know, we, we go into a lot of shit, Yolanda. We go into a lot of layers around all the things. Socioeconomics, race, generation, all of it. Um, all the things. Uh, regional, it's good stuff um, and important conversations. So I'm excited. And, did, and a lot of fun. Too. Find it. Hmm? A lot of, I had some fun too along the way. That was my, well, that was sort of my next question. Did you find it hard to fit in with the other castmates? Did you have opportunities to get to know them before you all hmm. started filming, filming or was it they were purposefully making it as organic as possible? They tried to really, it was made organic as possible. Nothing about any of the interactions was contrived or forced. Most of these women I met in real time on the show. So you'll see it play out very authentically. Mm -hmm. um, fit in, I never did. Uh, I don't, spoiler alert. Uh, me and Ramona <laughs> are different. Me and Luann are different. Me and Sonia are different. And even me and Leah are very different. I'm very different than all my castmates. And they are different than me. What you will see, though, Yolanda, is an opportunity to develop some, some level, varying levels of authentic relationship with each woman. What I didn't do, because I had uh, advice from other Black women that appear on other franchises and even other platforms, don't come into it. And I'm a fan of the show. So what I love is how people go on these shows and act like, oh, I've never seen an episode. Girl, bye. Okay. I'm right. a fan of Right. Why would you join something you've never seen before? That's reckless. I don't know who these people. You don't know these people? You right. Do your research. Right. Hello, due diligence. So I'm a fan of the, the, the franchise. I know the characters from that perspective. But I didn't bring that to my experience with them on the show, Yolanda. I, right. I said, you know what? I saw you on TV, and I'm leaving that at the door. Now I'm experiencing you woman to woman human to human and let's see what it is and that's how i approach it and so there's some strong personalities there's some passive aggressive personalities up there um did you find that there were because because of race that it was it was harder to have real mm -hmm. talk conversations at all I want to be because I'm sure there had to be times where somebody came out, and came at you sideways, and they had to get the real ebony, and they may not have been ready for that. They may not have been ready for that. So, did you feel like that you could truly be yourself? Yeah. And I'll get back to the other question in just a second. I was going to say really that part because I can't spill anything, but I absolutely, I don't know that I felt I could be. I just decided to be myself. I don't. I promise you, I don't know any other way to be, you know, and it wasn't going to be authentic to me. It wasn't going to be authentic to the viewing audience and nor was it going to be authentic to uh, my castmates. You know, at some point I felt it was important to just, it is what it is, you know, and now we'll have to figure it out um, mm -hmm. or, or not. Right. 
but but I'm not going to, I wasn't even paid enough child to be acting. Okay. That's what, that's what it wasn't. So, um, right. you know, not that that's my nature, but just keeping it a hundred. So at that point, you know, we just have to show up in authenticity and it is what it is. And then we're going to see what could, could manifest from there. And that's what you will see play out on the season. But yeah, they got, they got full throttle potent as you know, her me. And, and and me them that they, they, I want to mm-hmm. be they did not hold back either you know I'm not on a cast with women that give a damn about how they are perceived so it, it's 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 a hundred percent one hundred percent authenticity from all sides I love it so what's next obviously this is see this is your first season joining the cast but outside of Real Housewives what's next for you yeah, the Housewives is great, Yolanda. It's been, um, you know, a, a really cool experience. But by no means, you know, you know me to know that's, that's like not my end game, right? That's 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 a a cool thing to be a part of. But the intention is to continue to grow Holding Court. Um, I think there's some really cool spaces I'd like to see that grow into. Um, there are a couple of other projects I'll call them coming up on the horizon. That are that touch on uh, social justice and true crime. That's a tease. And then the, the next book is in the works too. And the next book is going to be really important in terms of my contribution to the culture. And some of you are we going to see my businesses on the show? Yes, and yes. You're going to because that's the thing. Like I I don't have a husband and three kids. So what you are going to see from me on the show is a manifestation of. The things that make me happy, the things that give me life, the things that wake me up in the morning and give me purpose. One last really great question. I'm going to let you go because I know we need to wrap it up. But this isn't my question. Actually, I, my question is much more fun. But this is a good question for Jincha14. Who is on your personal board of directors? That is a great question. Yeah. So um, that's a real one. I talk about that in Pretty Powerful. Mm-hmm. One of thing um i have a best friend that i met in undergrad at chapel hill her name is christina jackson scott she is on my board of directors she is she's brilliant she's wonderful she's the best friend but she's also um an, she's an equal she ended up um being one of the editors on pretty powerful so we have an ability to work together and that's not something as I'm sure you know, you you can do with every friend. So a friend mm-hmm. that can that can give honest feedback as a professional, as an intellectual peer is important. Christina's on my board of directors. Um, my other best friend who resides in Charlotte, she's been my best friend for, since seventh grade, um, Michelle Wynn Sublet. She's mm-hmm. on my board of directors. Michelle is one of my personal advisors. When I'm going through, when I, when I get so caught up in the, the business and the mechanics, and the, the, the type A shit, Michelle reminds me to, to, to tap into my heart space and mm-hmm. tap into my vulnerability and to make sure I'm serving what meets me spiritually. So Michelle's mm-hmm. on my um, And then one of the other, I have a, a few others, but one of the other people is a good guy friend of mine. His, left, his name is Jano Caldwell. He's just somebody that keeps me grounded in my vision. He's a he's a believer. Christina and Michelle are as well. But Gianna, he talked a lot about scripture and spirituality and being aligned in God's vision for our life and faith, right? Because see, somebody can't see for you what they can't see for themselves. Where are we gonna be shouting in a minute? Hallelujah. Right? Right, right. I know you know what I'm talking about, Yolanda. I know, so, I, I do. About Gianno, and I don't really too much do the guy friend thing because you know how they most of them are but right. Gianna, but Gianna's special and that he um his vision for me is enormous because his vision for himself is enormous and and we can walk in in, in alignment around that so i think it's very important to have somebody that is spiritually aligned uh with your vision in god's favor over you so mm, i love it now is there a special someone because i mean if some one more person came in my inbox oh, asking ah! me about I'm like, shoot your own shot, bro. Right. Like, come on. Not the purpose. Shoot and your own. you have time for that. Um, 
Right. Y'all, gotta, y'all have to watch the show. What I can tell you is this. You will see aspects of my personal life 100% play out next season. So they're, they're, these questions will be answered in short order. Very good. So if we were in studio, like in regular world and for the podcast, there's I have a so segment. So I'm going to ask you two questions. You can't okay. think about it. Okay. Um, first thing that comes to your mind, and I call it so. Okay. So if you could be any Star Wars or Star Trek character, who would you choose and why? I only know the I don't know her name. It's the one played by um Nichelle Nichols. Um You heard? Ooh, I'll look. Yeah, because you heard. That's it. That's, That's the reason. It? That's I don't know none of these people, Yolanda. Okay. I just don't okay, know. What about Marvel? Can we get a Marvel character? Something. Um Oh, uh, <laughs> Killmonger. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that, let me let me try, let me go into the ocean where my ancestors were because they knew it was better than bondage. Absolutely. Girl. Oh, I love it. Okay, and the other one is a little bit more lighthearted. Okay. If you could be any animal or reincarnate in any animal, which animal would you choose? You what? already know the answer to that, my baby. I would be a, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. I think she's the most here. She's sleep now. The most beautiful, precious baby in the world. She has a better life than me. Well, she is sleep, but some people didn't see her in the beginning. Okay, I'll get her. Hold on. Come on, wake up for a second. <laughs> Look at her. She's like, Mom, I'm trying to sleep. Leave me alone. Come see attorney. Look at attorney Trotman. Hey, beautiful. This oh, my name. gosh. Isn't she beautiful, y'all? She is, but she looked like she just woke up, too. She, Oh, she looked mad for real, y'all. <laughs> she is mad. No, she's mad for real. Oh, well, that is, that is absolutely perfect. So listen, <laughs> go, Ebony has to, Ebony has to go. Hopefully we can have you back so we can finish up part two. There's a lot of stuff we didn't get to cover. I oh. would love to have a one-on-one talking about strictly social justice issues, especially with, with, with these upcoming trials and what's going on. Cause you know, that's my jam too. Absolutely. Um, for those of you joining us, definitely slide over to the combo pie show. Like us there. Um, follow me at attorney Trotman. Definitely check out the website at the com. sis i appreciate you for those of you who didn't catch in the beginning i've known her since the first time she stepped i was a big baby lawyer yeah i was and, it's she true. Was, and she was kicking down doors then and she continues to kick down doors now i'm so so very proud of you so definitely check out real housewives of new york get pretty powerful if you haven't gotten it uh revolt tv the podcast. Now, where's the podcast? Where can they find it's the podcast? The Holding Court uh, with Ebony K. Williams, Spotify, iHeart, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Sis, I want to just give you some flowers, too, before I go. Um, you guys, I, nobody exists in a vacuum, okay? Especially for you young people listening. Um, it takes people cultivating, seeing your gift, seeing your favor, cultivating, understanding that there is no such thing as competition for those of us that really uh, aspire to be at the top of our game is only collaboration. Stop it. Only collaboration. And Yolanda, I just want to thank you for always being there for me as a sister in the law. It, it means a lot to me. I'll never forget it. You guys have really been shifters in my journey. And I love and appreciate you. Love you too, sis. Let little mama get some sleep. I know. What's wrong with you? Crazy. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I will definitely be in touch with you soon. Y'all take it easy. Everybody have a wonderful night. Bye, Bye, sis. Bye-bye. Bye. Do that last. And there's something that we call looping. So if the big thing is 10 feet, she's 10.